We begin with a brief history of geometry. Why is it that within every great philosopher, astronomer, or scientist, there lies a great geometer? It seems that the geometer turns astronomer, or astronomer turns geometer, and vice versa. The classic definition of geometer is a mathematician whose area of study is geometry. Now think about it. You have Plato and the Platonic solids, the sound of the spheres, or musica universalis, and the theory of first principle geometry being taught that all atoms and material is formed out of nested Platonic solids spinning. You have Archimedes and the Archimedean solids, as well as the Archimedean spirals, there are others, such as the pre-Socratic philosopher Anaxagoras from around 467 BCE, who theorized his vortex motion of the universe in his book, The Nature of Things. Johannes Kepler was a strong believer in geometry and tried to prove the five platonic solids must be related to the structure of the universe. This idea was announced in his Cosmographic Mystery, published in 1596. The mathematical study of vortices continues with James Clark Maxwell's vortex analogy of the electromagnetic field and Lord Kelvin's theory that atoms were vortex rings in an all-pervading ether. There are so many more examples like Pythagoras, Euclid, and the father of geometry, Apollonius of Perga. It seems that the spiral shape is at the core of the structure of the universe. The whirlpool, or the water spiral, is a part of worldwide folklore, and it is a magical and religious symbol for the origins of life and energy. Whirlpools are considered gates to the netherworlds. Ancient lore has it that whirlwinds provide circuitry for gods, demons, and witches. In the Old Testament, whirlwinds are described as a direct connection to us mere mortals. For example, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. In 1835, here we have Eugenio Beltrami and the Beltrami Vortex. This is the geometry of what we in the electric universe refer to as Birkeland currents. Also, what Don Scott did the math of, a force-free field-aligned current, and the same exact behavior as Markland convection, as well as the German concept of the ether, Zitterbewegung. In physics, the Zitterbewegung, jittery motion in German, is the predicted rapid oscillatory motion of elementary particles. Speaking of electromagnetism being the primal organizer of elements along cylindrical coaxial filaments, we'll hop directly into artist Dr. Walter Russell's work. You can see the same or similar things as Birkeland currents and the multiple vortex of tornadic winds that Andy Hall describes in his Eye of the Storm series. We also have Victor Schauberger's work here showing longitudinal vortexes. What's more is it's showing the double spiral longitudinal vortexes here. Now, observe the similarities of the Doherty set, even down to the toroidal construction of the double helical minimal energy filament itself. So what exactly is the Doherty set? The Doherty set is an emergent, first-principle, magnetohydrodynamic geometry. Magnetohydrodynamics is the study of the magnetic properties and behavior of electrically conducting fluids. Examples of such magnetofluids include plasmas, liquid metals, salt water, and electrolytes. How can we validate what the Doherty set is? Easy, by using the inverse square law. The inverse square law shows that light, electromagnetic radiation, gravity, and electricity all obey the same scaling rule. The Doherty set is, among other things, a series of cascading spherical pressure gradients. The projective supergeometry is a simplex, but it is nonetheless doing only one thing, which is repeating the initial Bessel function iteratively over and over again, like a beating drum recursively building up progressive geometry along an interconnected chain-like so-called space-time, or more accurately, a plasma fractal. Yes, Birkeland currents are fractal. A fractal is a curve or geometric figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. 
Fractals are useful in modeling structures, such as eroded coastlines or snowflakes, in which similar patterns recur at progressively smaller scales, and in describing partly random or chaotic phenomena such as crystal growth, fluid turbulence, and galaxy formation. The Doherty set can be thought of like the Mandelbrot set, but instead of exploring the complex and imaginary fields and fractions, this scalable geometry exposes plasma, or ether, or what mainstream cosmologists refer to as the just-mentioned space-time, to be fractal. Speaking of fractal, let's look at the Mueller set. The Mueller fractal is the basis of global scaling. Developed by Hartmut Mueller, we can observe the similarities here in how octaves as well as harmonies of sound also abide by similar scaling laws. So one might intuitively assume that fundamentally, on every scale, there must exist this wave nested within wave behavior, and indeed, that is exactly what the Doherty set is. Is it possible that in a universe of electromagnetic induction, the Doherty set is the master key of electromagnetism itself, and in the big picture, perhaps the geometry of the electric universe model? I met Professor Donald E. Scott at the Thunderbolts EU 2017 conference for the sole purpose of showing him my cartographs and geometry. Don was baffled and exclaimed that I discovered it before him, which we will find out many people were onto this idea before us. So I then gave my whole body of work to Don Scott for a review, and he said, quote, Buddy, I have examined, I believe, all the links and YouTube videos you sent me. They are quite impressive because you are clearly able to include the wild complexity of what the interior structure of a Birkeland force-free field-aligned current would look like if we were able to get inside one. Nice work. I see that you are aware of the complex structure that my model says is inside a Birkeland current. But in another sense, the overall property is quite simple. It is a set of concentric spirals whose pitch angle increases smoothly and continuously with radial distance. It is important to understand that the words helix and vortex are not the same. They are not synonymous. A helix is a twisting spiral path wrapped around a cylinder. Example, a rope wound around an infinitely long pipe. That is the shape of a Birkeland current. On the other hand, a vortex is also a twisting spiral path, but it is like a rope wound around a cone. It is of finite length, not infinitely long. All vortices come to a point. They are not like a Birkeland current, many of which are light years in length. Markland convection is a physical process that goes on in a certain class of Birkeland current. It depends on there being actual charged particles and electric fields present to interact with each other. A process is very different from a shape, but a shape can also be many processes. Now, let's compare all of this to the spiral periodic table of elements. Here's Walter Russell's periodic table of elements. And here is the Doherty periodic table of elements. Have a look see at the meandering of the wave crest and wave trough. We are all electric creatures floating in the electric sea of this electric universe. In more simple words, we might say everything in the universe is trying to become every other thing, and every condition of everything is trying to become every other condition. The universe indeed seems to be mimicry on all scales, everything becoming everything else. Least we forget, James Clark Maxwell himself was a great geometer. Just look at the skills of this cartographer. He is a map maker and an excellent one at that. We are all mapping it out in one way or another. Ah, yes, hop vibrations, spinors, and twister theory, which fundamentally use Maxwell's equations. Look at the similarities there. We have to do a brief on British physicist Tony Skirmy or at least his work on skirmions, which are theorized to be the structure of ball lightning. These objects are quite intricate from a geometric point of view, said Dr. Sergic. 
they resemble a complex system of interlocking rings, with the whole forming a particle-like structure, which particularly interesting is the skirmion's topological properties. They can be distorted, stretched, or squeezed, but will not come apart. This robustness is one of the properties that scientists are most interested in exploiting. If this is true, and these structures are inherent in the Doherty set, this gives more credence to the predictive power of the set to show off the inner and outer interactions of skirmion behavior and a seemingly infinite amount of applied combinatorics. What these examples show is magnetic and electromagnetic behavior exhibiting precise geometries. We can even think of it as a toroidal node, a filamental universe. It is all double helical, but it is helical because of its toroidal construction, and this idea is true on all scales. Most of the so-called laws of nature are habits. Idea and memory is constructed within the self-descriptive circuit along with being and form. The field creates the form. Higher order magnitudes of this integrated information system build up cascading morphic resonance or morphogenetic fields. These are quaternion, just like the construction of baryonic matter and cell growth, as well as multiplicity in living systems. In mathematics, the Cayley-Dixon construction, named after Arthur Cayley and Leonard Dixon, produces a sequence of algebras over a field of real numbers, each with twice the dimension of the previous one. The number of filaments nested inside of filaments nested inside of filaments is a Cayley-Dixon construction. This nesting behavior is indicative of coaxial cables and filaments as well. Getting back into it, we have Benoit Mandelbrot and the fractal revolution, which directly led to the telecommunication and computing age with the introduction of fractal antennas. Nature is fractal, communication is fractal, electricity is fractal. Think fractals, filaments, frequencies, FFF. In music, three Fs is a fortissimo, meaning very, very loud. I find it very pertinent because this is indeed a very loud message to the world. There is a fractality to everything. We are the break in the symmetry. Iterative, constructive, and destructive feedback loops integrate coherent harmonic circuitry. Worded differently, coherence, or consciousness, in the ether is geometric and is composed of a series of fractal feedback loops. As self-organizing systems, our integrated information circuitry is interscalar. This is a gestalt type of thinking. The parts are related to the whole, and the whole is related to the parts type of ideation. Geometry, and especially the Doherty set, play an interdisciplinary role in our lives, everyday phenomena, and the progression of human knowledge. It is self-evident that geometry is a critical component of the electric universe model of cosmology.